face that this world has forgotten. Mm, what is up, you guys, and welcome to, of course, our Valhalla Pokemon League battle, week five versus David D Train and the Silly Steelers. Now, I did upload this battle earlier, and the editing and the um, kind of adjustment to the voices and sound was really bad edited, so I decided to drop that, re-upload, and just, well, it's the fundamentally is the same, but I kind of want to, to have the preview a bit different, I kind of want to talk about what I was thinking about, and you know, what I'm bringing. Now, David's team is very tough, and he had a lot of threats here, and luckily he didn't bring all the threats, I think. Um, his team is outside of the, the things that had that it has didn't, that didn't come to this battle was Verizion and uh, Megalodias. Those two were the one was prepping for the most Megalodias primarily because it was one of those Pokemon that had the best speed tier on his team. So any Pokemon I bring is with the speed tier in mind. So we have Curum Black here, which is a bulkier variant able to outspeed Busfold. That's pretty much it. With uh, a Shovel Berry to be able to parry any C Focus Blast from the Thunderous and um, yeah, that's about it. Ice Beam, Earth Power, Fusion Bolt, and Roost. Celebi with Joshua Berry, very, very specially defensive. No speed whatsoever, basically. Uh, mainly here to check things. And uh, it is not an important Pokemon, more a filler. It has U-Turn, be able to abuse the Latias on the switching. And uh, Hidden Power Flying instead of Psychic. Because it dealt better with Buzzball. And... Um, Verision more than the psychic would do, and other than that, is green and earth ground earth power ground power. Is say, but yeah, earth power gigalith with uh, rain berry special defensive, able to do thunderous no matter what form, even with one nasty plot. Scarf Terra Cross with the uh, adamant variant, able to outspeed Megalodius basically, and that's about it. So it's actually fairly bulky. Uh, Gyarados, which is adamant also, and uh, yeah, overall, very, very hard. For them D train to be dealing with mainly because it is one of those Pokemon that potentially, depending on what it brings, can be very tough for him to uh, deal with. Uh, mainly because if you can't outspeed it, it can most likely want to kill most of his teams, teams, team. And Tabu Coco dedicated defoggers since I two Pokemon weeks to rock, and I think it's modest this time around, able to outspeed Megalodius. That's about it. Very, very, very basic Tabu Coco with his Waco Bell. And yeah, my opponent here brings uh, Thunderous, Primarina, Pillow Swine, Politoed, Buzzball, and Heatran. I did suspect Thunderous, Pillow Swine, and Heatran to bring come to the battle. Uh, was uh, thinking Buzzball might make it, and Politoed due to him could potentially check my sand, which is why no Southland nor Sandslash is on this roster. And of course, Primarina was something I did not expect for this Waco Bell. I did not prep for that Pokemon at all, so that's a Pokemon I definitely fear. So, without further ado, well, let's go into the match. My initial thought here is to bring Curum because I do believe it deals well with his Oracle Fiend, no matter what it actually brings from the get go. So, with that said, enjoy. So, straight off the bat, my opponent leads off with Fundy, which I felt was a possible way for him to deal with Koku. So, we get a very free Ice Beam here. Since I'm Shuffleberry, I don't need to fear the C Focus Blast. He's actually switching this out, which I felt was strange at first, though. He probably thinks I have something way to kind of maneuver around him. And since he's switching Pillow Swine, um, I feel, yeah, he's definitely going to go for rocks. So I'm just going to keep spamming Ice Beam. Basically, I want to give him the illusion that I am Scarfed. I think that's a very strong edge to be having since that forces out switches because, well, people aren't really dealing well with Cure and Black. Uh, now, he pulls a combination here with Earthquake and will follow that up with Ice, ice Shard. I could have roosted here, but I stayed before. I really want to keep that illusion alive and not really feel that I can pretty effortlessly actually go for a default with Coco when he needed to and peel this one is out of the way and I feel we get a good lead wave here since that most likely this is only Rocker. Now Buzzball comes in, Tabu Coco is a very easy switch in against Tabu Coco. It can survive the Poison Jab or Earthquake, potentially not necessarily Earthquake, but I can take its dual stab and most likely take better damage towards his probably most predictable move is going to be the Drain Punch here or the Hammer Arm with Super Power. So we take that really well. I'm actually going to do a bit of a sack play here. I uh, actually go directly for the Defog just to ensure that we don't have any Stroke Rock on the field. He switches out back to his Fundy and here's what I realized. I have a very good chance here to see whether or not his Fundy is of a C set or a Scoff set. So I'm actually going to go for Dazzling Gleam, uh, potentially actually sacking Koku. But we do find out here that he's not Scarfed and it goes for Nasty Plot, which means that, alright, 
possibly that he has a C move move, but I need to preserve Coco now that I know that I can be faster. So I'm gonna actually sack Celebi to get a free switch in. Uh, he goes right for the Sludge Wave, which um, makes sense. And it definitely, of course, takes out the Celebi. It doesn't stand a chance as I'm gonna bring my scoffed hair across, forcing it out. Now, I could have played a safer play here, which was actually go with Yelith, but I'm not sure I could survive a plus two. Uh, focus blast from that. So go right with Stone Edge. We do connect this luckily, and uh, well, Heatran is definitely not a threat towards my team in any way. So with that said, I'm actually gonna just send in Gyarados and gonna go for that very very easy Dragon Dance because now I know already that it doesn't have a Pokemon that are faster than um, well than a plus one Gyarados. Now it goes for Protect Scarab. Also said it has saw left, or I knew this Pokemon wasn't Scarf nor C. So I can, like I said, freely here switch to Gyarados, go for that Dragon Ass. He switches in Primarina, and uh, unless this Primarina is bulky, there's really a very low chance of him to survive or actually have bounce. And I said before, I don't have the C bounce. I actually have Walk and Berry because I, I got screwed over last week with a Whimsicott and Natural Gift. Uh, so I decided to, well, kind of play the more defensive game. And we actually KO the Primarina here straight off the bat. And uh, his next Pokemon is Politoed. Politoed, unless a hidden power electric really can't hurt me all that much. And of course, in return, I really don't fear the Politoed at all. So I can just go directly to Bounce again as he's going to showcase, of course, Anchor, hoping that I actually was set up against that. There's no reason for me doing so. Bounce should be well within the range of taking it out, but well, it wasn't. But the close two, as it brings a Neva, survives clearly on 38 HP, and um, I can just follow it up with a waterfall, and that's Politoed out of the way. Uh, his uh, three remaining Pokemon really aren't dealing with this Pokemon at all. Um, Abomination, which is a boss wall, uh, really need to pray that I miss the bounce, which. Granted, it actually has 85 accuracy, so it can miss. As it goes for Bull Cup, it won't matter, since I am adamant, I'm really I'm really just eating through anything that it's connecting to, and of course I will connect the bounce, and Bustful goes down, and uh, well, <laughs> let's say it as it is, the, the two remaining Pokemon really can't deal with Gyarados either. I do have Speed of Funders now, we saw it was an Acid Plot set, not a Scarf variant. Waterfall will of course connect and KO it. And the last Pokemon is of course Heatran, which as stated before, it has leftovers, not Scarf. I do have speed it. Even if it was Scarf, I would probably be able to speed it anyway. I don't know. I'm just talking at this moment. But really, this is a 5 of victory and it, it looks like a massacre from my side of view. But it really comes down to one of those really basic things and that is that I got an opening that gave me enough alleviation to be able to just break through and sweep really early. So yeah, a quick rundown of my initial thought about this battle, and I'll be honest and say this, I think I got a massive momentum, and, and that's about it, like, Heatran allowed me to set up, he had nothing to check the Gyarados, and he just snowballed from there, and it really has nothing to do with David's caliber as a player, I definitely feel that he, if I face him again, he will actually um, try to shake Gyarados a lot better. Uh, we talked about this afterwards, and he did say that he was prepping for much, much more offensive versions with Sand. Uh, seeing the team initially, he realized, uh, as I set up, that he really had nothing that could potentially deal with Jaros head on, and definitely didn't suspect it to be adamant. So, as I said, I got a mass momentum, and that's about it. And we all do those, I was gonna say, prepping, where we kind of just miss out on Pokemon that can break through. I've done that myself, and everyone can fall for that. And I don't, as I said, I don't believe anything of that. that do um, judge David as a player because I know how strong he is and how good he is. So, I mean, he got a few titles already. So, he definitely is a competitive and smart player. This was just one of those things where I don't believe it could do as much damage as it did in the battle. And I win initially due to that very reason alone. So, for what it's worth, great game, David. And I aren't necessarily looking forward to facing you again because I believe this was the best team I could bring to the table against you and well obviously I can't pull the same trick twice I am super aware of that so with that said guys thank you for watching make sure to check out David's side of this battle which is going to be linked down below he has a tremendous battle as I said already so make sure to subscribe to him he needs all the support he can get so I do believe he deserves a lot more momentum in his channel than he actually is getting at the moment so with that said thank you for watching and uh, well yeah, see you next week in the next battle of the battle. Take care, guys.